Chad Lespino, Pat, and she's going to be speaking with us on bridging art and science through the art of awareness. And uh, I, I, I will just let Pat take the floor. Patricia Lespino, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. It's such a great pleasure to be in this room with all this energy and excitement and creativity. I feel like I'm at home. <laughs> Today I'd like to talk to you about my project, which is my passion and my life's work. And I call it the Orchid Alliance Project, Bridging Art and Science, because it uses art to raise the level of awareness for things like conservation, uh, biodiversity, um, and really it's all about global stewardship, using art as a vehicle to communicate that and to get in touch with people in a different way than what everybody's been used to uh, in this green movement that we're all in. So um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about me as an artist. I'm doing some exciting things. i am I'm been involved um, with this project in uh, many solo exhibitions and um, they've been in various venues um, outside of what you normally would think that an artist like myself would be in. Um, they've been in botanical institutions. Uh, they've, we always try and find different venues where it can be an exciting change and something different from what people expect. Um, my, my life as an artist has been interesting. Um, I've been working in collaboratively for a uh, number of years with some really interesting organizations like the Smithsonian and uh, the U.S. Botanic Garden. I'm working right now on a project with the U.S. Botanic Garden that um, explores Japanese orchid, orchids. So I'm, I'm looking at cultural, the background culturally of, of orchids, using orchids kind of as a flagship uh, kind of as a symbol or a metaphor and transcending uh, language using visual, the visual world of art to, to convey that message. Um, all this, of course, comes with disappointments. And um, many of these are deep because, of course, you know, I pour so much into the work. It's, it's you know, from my soul and from my heart. Um, these disappointments, I look at them like almost opportunities to take a look at what I'm doing and perhaps retool it or rechange it or restate it a different way. Um, you know, I think rejection is, is pretty much part of art uh, because, you know, not everybody accepts a new idea, a new way of doing things. And I think that, you know, for me, I look at those really as possibilities. Um, I don't look at really no's as no so much as maybe no, not right now. I may not have enough information, so tell me more. So um, sometimes I don't really like to, to go to the mailbox because there may be some rejection letters in there. So what do I do? I send my husband. <laughs> So how did I come up with this idea to use orchids, specifically orchids, as my flower of choice? Lots of people ask me that. Why orchids? Why not any other flower? And um, what I'd like to do is just share with you some photos, because I think a lot of people have this idea of orchids because they've seen them in the grocery store, or you know, they've seen corsages that have these big, giant cattleyas. And they don't really realize the diversity and how unique orchids are. They think there's just these certain varieties. But, but I'd like to share um, some photos with you that Dr. Ron McHatton put together for me. He and I are collaborating on this project. He's the COO of the American Orchid Society. And he funnels information to me about rare and endangered species, um, which are many of the subject of these paintings that you see around the room here. So let me, uh, without further ado, 
just take a look at the diversity of some of these plants. You know, the amazing thing about orchids is that they grow on every continent in the world with the exception of Antarctica. A lot of people think they're just in the tropics or in tropical, warm, jungle kind of regions. But they actually grow right here in Connecticut. Um, there's uh, 25,000 species of orchids. It's one of the largest flowering species uh, on the planet. And you can see by some of these photos the diversity. Um, they grow in so many different geographic regions, you know, from the shoreline all the way up to 13,000 feet above sea level. So um, they represent really some of the smallest flowers. Some can be just, uh, just a few millimeters in size, all the way up to big, huge palm trees. So there's a perfect example of how small orchids can be. Um, what's interesting is man's fascination, and that's an area that really, really interests me as well. Not only how beautiful the markings are and the shapes and the colors and the sizes and, and all the beautiful variations of, of orchids, but also um, what is intriguing me, you know, is the the actual infatuation, or as I call it, the fascination of orchids, that orchids have gripped man over the centuries. I mean, they go back 2,500 years ago was the first actual uh, written reference in literature and art in as far as orchids. Back to the time of Confucius, 500 BC. So, you know, from that point, Till now, we've just been absolutely captivated by orchids. We can't get enough of them. And what's evidence to this is that in addition to the 25,000 species of orchids, there's also another 130,000 hybrids, meaning man can't get enough of just the 25,000 species. We have to go out and cross this with that and then create other wonderful different varieties, shapes, forms, and markings. So that's one of the things that really, really, I started thinking about that as an artist. And I thought, you know, it's not enough for me to just paint in my studio. I want to really take my work and actually use it as a vehicle to communicate with people and to communicate specifically about something, and that something would be global stewardship. And what could I use better to do that with is this flower that has been so captivating and mystifying than the orchid. And plus there's 25,000 plus another 30,000 species. I figured, well, in my lifetime, I probably would have enough subject matter. So that's part of the background of the orchid. Um, you know, what's amazing to me is their evolution, too. I mean, some of these plants actually don't even have uh, leaves. They've evolved to grow up in the tippy-top high parts of treetops and in boggy creeks. So what's interesting about that idea is everybody thinks that, well, you know, if they're so diverse, why do we have to worry about them being extinct or why, why should they be in danger? Well, the problem is that they're so specifically specialized in each of their species environments that as global warming happens and areas where one species grows where it's wet, um, if that area dries out, then that's the end of that species. They, they can adapt, but they, they are very specialized to their own environments. And unfortunately, what's happening is, you know, extinction and, and adaptation and species actually going extinct, that's not unusual. But what is unusual is the alarming rate at which habitats are changing, the alarming rate of deforestation, and the alarming rate that ecosystems are being affected by even the global spread of pesticides. So what's happening is, is that the orchid and all the things that the orchid depends upon and which it depends upon, because it doesn't 
Uh, it does depend on other uh, insects and animals uh, and other plants to actually pollinate and survive. What's happening is these environments are changing so rapidly because of the huge combination of things that are going on, creating a perfect storm, that adaptation is becoming extremely, uh, extremely difficult for these plants and, of course, the uh, pollinators that also depend on them. So that being said, I'd like to talk a little bit about my work and how I kind of evolved as an artist. Um, I feel like I'm a little unique because even though um, nature has always been my primary inspiration, um, I have this side of me that is, you know, the scientist, and then I have the side that's the artist. And of course, um, in order to marry those two, I studied simultaneously along those two paths. In college, I took um, biology and horticulture, and I also took art. And I was very passionate about those two things. And I think that, you know, when you're studying, a lot of times you don't know where you're going to end up. And so um, along that path, I found that I have this side that is very right brain oriented and the other side that's very left brain oriented, meaning the one side that's very creative and kind of exuberant and free and um, loose. And then the other side is this very um, detailed, structured um, part that wants to really look at things, you know, very closely. So in order to marry those two different styles, I'll just show you a few of the paintings here on the screen while I talk about this one. I developed a style that really brings together those two aspects. And um, the way that my process has evolved, much the same as the orchids that I'm painting, um, I decided that I, I really wanted to portray the orchid not so much in a biological illustration sense, but I wanted to really have these orchids kind of have a spirit or a, a, an interior kind of a light or an exuberance that, you know, isn't really um, constricted by being so detailed. Yet, I, it's important for me also to make sure that people understand the, the way they've evolved to have these wonderful shapes and colors and markings. So um, to tell you a little bit about how all that works together, um, I'll just talk about this one piece, which is uh, titled Alice B. in honor of Mrs. Alice B. DuPont. Um, I just finished a, a solo exhibition, three months solo ex exhibition at Longwood Gardens in Kennett Square, uh, Pennsylvania. I totally recommend everybody go there. It's really beautiful. Uh, they have a great orchid collection. I've done a lot of study and research there with them. But this particular painting, I think, is a good example because it shows my process in that it starts really as a sculpture. Um, I actually start just with a white on white canvas and I'm working uh, the surfaces. I'm actually pressing botanical materials into the surfaces. And then I sand all that down. Um, so what you get is a kind of like fossilized impressions in the background. Then I start to build up layer and layer and layer of real thin transparent glaze layers, almost like the old masters used to do. And that is a very <coughs> spontaneous uh, process. I'm you know, working very rapidly. Uh, I'm just using color after color. And then after that, um, I just decide what orchid is going to go on that surface. These finished paintings can have anywhere from 60 to 80 layers of glaze. And the reason I work that way is because I want light to actually animate those surfaces. I want the light to go back in, bounce around, come back out. Almost like when you look up at a petal in the sunlight, you're seeing the light kind of um, just be luminescent on that surface. So these paintings actually are meant to be journeys. 
uh, people can walk in, look at the impressions, sp spend some time, almost like you're walking through a forest. So that's kind of like the style. And it's, I've told you a little bit about me as an artist, um, why I do orchids. Now I'd like to talk about how those two things come together to create the Orchid Alliance project, uh, Bridging Art and Science. And what that means is I'm creating exhibitions that are very collaborative. Um, they're exhibitions that are meant to be educational. So what we're doing, I'm working with, on this project with my husband, Andrew, and I, who is my soulmate, my partner, and he's such an inspiration to me. Uh, we're a team on the project. It's a federally tra trademarked uh, project. And what's great about it is it's, it's inspiring people to look at uh, uh, global stewardship a different way. And what's interesting about it, too, is that we are breaking down barriers and really having people think about evolution and conservation in an entirely different way. And we're mounting worldwide exhibitions. These will have collateral materials and products. We've just signed a contract with Marilyn Goldberg, who we're doing some licensing with. And all, the whole idea of this is, of course, to bring awareness to um, the project and also to the environment. So um, what I'd really like to do is tell you just a little bit more about the project. And um, it has to do with bringing in uh, collaborators into the project, people like Stephen Ali at the Smithsonian. And um, also, I'm working with the uh, Freer and Sackler Gallery and um, the Smithsonian Horticulture uh, Department. So once again, the project is about awareness and how art can make a difference in that scenario and have people look at um, what we're doing to the environment and what we can uh, contribute. Thank you very much.